So a video of uh, our 1958 NAR Arbor Love, it's a 30-foot wooden boat made in Norway. Um, here I am out sailing it with my wife. Here's a line drawing of the of the NAR. The standing, the rigging in the sails are areas bigger than the actual NARs sailed in San Francisco. Here's the, the mainsail cover in excellent shape, made of umbrella. Looks brand new, practically. That's uh, this is the mainsail that I have in the picture we just saw. This is the one I sailed with. There's the battens are and the batten pockets are in good shape. The uh, US 24. This is the mainsail that I, it's the only one I used while I sailed. I believe it's in great shape. It's soft. It's not what uh, wouldn't uh, be something want to go race competitively with, but not bad. There's a Reef points there, so you could reef the main, but it's all in good shape. And with that came a matching uh, Genoa. This is the jib, fairly large jib, and this also is the one I used most of the time when I sailed. Looking around, it has really no issues. It's an Ulmer dry sail and they may have been made in the I'm guessing late 60s early 70s it's an older sail but uh, it could be sailed again no problem it's up here is one issue right here this seam pulled apart but that could be fixed easily that's the only spot that opened up and that could be fixed in no time back out sailing with the boat also came a second set of sails, matching, exactly the same. Maybe not quite in quite as good a condition. This is another Genoa here, and it's got one little issue. It's got a hole that uh, something, some rodent got through, but the rest of the sails has no problems. They're a little yellower than the other one that's been measured. It may have been raised at some point in its life. Uh, has a chief guard up there for the upper for the spreader. Keep it from wearing through. But you could use that one also. And with that as a main, there's the other main, the 24, and then over here that we have the other main sole, which is the US 20. I never used US 20, but I you could. It's in good good shape. Uh, not quite as good as US 24, but and I'm not sure which one is the original with the boat. I don't know. If, I've never been able to research that. There's no record of it. So I used 24. Yeah. It's a better sail. Here's a small jib you can put up during uh, when you have more wind and you want to just take it easy. It does have a couple of holes right there as one. And below it is the other. That would have to be patched. But that would be the sail you'd want to use. In a lot of wind. I don't know if I ever used it. I may have. It's off of US 20. Here's the spinnaker, which is in excellent shape. Probably wasn't used too awful much. I sailed with it a few times. There's the head. It's uh it has big shoulders. It's a big uh, ballooning spinnaker, a classic look. Not like a modern spinnaker, but has really full upper portion. And next, we'll take a look at the mast. I uncovered the mast. It was shrink wrapped over the winter, and so I just cut the shrink wrap up, shrink shrink wrap off, and we're mo moving our way up through here, looking at it. It's been varnished, and I, uh, I stripped it down. I had been covered in epoxy and so I stripped the epoxy off then I clear coated it with penetrating epoxy and then I put spar varnish uh, none of the boat has any all, all natural varnish on all wood on the boat on the spars everything there's there's no synthetics it's all natural varnish looking our way up through here it's all in nice shape there is the broken jumper strut uh, where I mentioned that before, which can easily be easily be fixed. I actually made the jumper struts. The originals were made of, or not the originals, but the ones I got 
where the boat were made of pine and they didn't look very nice so I made the uppers out of white oak and then it, sadly it got broken but there's the broken spot I have to make another one it's about the same size as a hammer handle so it's not like it would be a very difficult fix and there's the other one that's perfect that you can use as a template and uh, it goes right there bolt them right on there's the block for the jib it's fractional rig so the jib doesn't go all the way to the, to the top of the mast and we're here our way down through everything's in nice shape there's the spreaders they're oak white oak they're in great shape original as far as i know lines and rigging are there stainless rigging then there's the winch for the main halyard and here are your turnbuckles that are all set to go and could be put right back on and uh, the mast goes through the cabin top it's a uh, keel step so it goes right through Here's the uh, an issue that I concerned uh, one of the uh, person emailed me and was concerned just to want to see a little bit more detail here to make sure that the hull wasn't damaged when that tow rail was hit and it looks good. There's no the tow rail. If you look at uh, catch it in this picture, you can see it was scraped right along the top right there on the top edge it was pushed over and the, actually the hull was never touched. So the hull is in great shape. It's painted. So you, there's no marks on it. And uh, it takes just a little bit of work to put that back together and make it nice. Probably could do it uh, in a day. Let's see. Um, found the interior cushions and exterior cushions. These are the cushions for the for the uh, cockpit, which is nice. Uh, that one's in good shape. Uh, this back one's the only one that has an issue. It's um, something. Something got into it and ate the stuffing out of it. So you could use it as a template. It only has holes on one side, so and a, the zipper is in bad shape. But you could get a piece of foam cut and just use the good side up, I suppose. Uh, they're all vinyl. Here's the one for the other side. They fit in there nicely, so you can have a nice place to sit while you're having cocktails on your on your boat on your gentleman's day sailor be nice and comfortable uh interior the berths uh also the cushions for those i'll take a peek in here in a second and there's the uh, port one in place and on the other side of the starboard ones in place and they're in, in good shape and uh, maybe straightened out a little bit looks like they're kind of rolled on the foam a little bit but there's the uh, uh v-berth cushion goes right up in there I slept in the V-berth um, a couple nights. Oh, that one needs a zipper replaced, I think, right there. It's bad shape. I think that was the only one that had an issue. Needed a new zipper. The V-berth is comfortable. I slept in there when I was in Canada. I took my wife and sister-in-law there one time. And Lisa and Jenny, if you're watching, I apologize again. Looking out the uh, portal here, we look porthole. We're looking at the. Uh, the tow rail where it's back broken back there and where the light shines shining through is the upper plank here I just want to show folks that that plank is you know, naturally opens up a little bit uh, it sheds light uh, let's light through you can see that Carlin has been was riveted in place up there which is the way they built those in Norway yeah planks are all edge glued except for the top plank a little bit of light shining through, but that'll close up once it's in the water. That'll be nice and tight. You could caulk it. I, it's above the water line, and you could caulk planks above the water line. I wouldn't touch anything below the water line. Here's uh, looking at the inside of the hull, just below where the tow rail was hit, just to make sure. I want to show folks that it's there's no damage under there. The plank is uh, is clean. Everything's good. A little bit of light through that top plank, but that's all. The rest of the lengths you'll find are pretty tight. As I look below, you'll see that everything that's down on the side is. Let's see if I got a shot of that going down. Yeah, those are all tight, edge glued. And on the other side, it's exactly the same way. A little bit of light shining through there. As I say, they'll swell up once it's back in the water and the boat grows a little bit and everything seals up tight. 
You can see the mahogany is all edge glued. Inside, new planks, uh, things that were replaced. You kind of you get an idea of how many planks were put in the bottom. So a brand new mast step. Um, some frames were added, brand new frames. I'm lifting up the floorboards just to show the frames and the keelson. Everything's tight. There's no issues down here. Let's see, there's no light shining through on any of those blanks, so it's very tight. Side also, there's the uh, bilge pump right there. And there's a butt block. Those are supposed to be rounded on top. That's the way they shed water. It's normal. And um, there's a drain hole. And frames. Everything is good and tight. Looks like brand new keel bolts. Keel bolts were replaced. I'm assuming it's nice and shiny. So there's the sender for the knot meter. Looking inside this cabinetry, showing the planks also are tight and clean. And go to the other side. Same thing here. Planking's all tight. You may see a little light through, but as a as if wooden boat people, you would know that that tightens up quickly when it's in the water. I used used to. Uh, Always carry a sawdust box on a pole, and as soon as I put it in the water, just open the sawdust underneath the boat, and everything pretty much stops, and the leaks stop. And that's uh, Arbor Love. Owned it for over 20 years, and it's for sale. Uh, email me if you have any questions.